Welcome to On the Brink, a fresh lens to take you and your business to new heights. Hi, I'm Andy Simon. And as you know, I'm your host and your guide. My job is to get you off the brink by bringing to you some interesting people who can help you see, feel, and think in new ways so that you can begin to change what you're doing and become the best that you can be. So I have with me today Meg Nassaro. And Meg, I said her name right, yes, is a beautiful <laughs> woman. And you're gonna enjoy this conversation as you do all of ours. But there's something in her journey that you're going to relate to well. As we know, the journey is our life, but it's never a straight line. It's a path or a maze way, full of hurdles and obstacles. You know, I clearly found that in my book, Rethink, Smashing the Myths of Women in Business. But even in my first book, On the Brink, every one of the stories I share is about people who get stuck or stalled and have to pause, step back, a little like an anthropologist that I am, and, and begin to think about how to do this differently. So let me tell you about, first, Butterfly Awakening is her new book. Let's get this up here so you can see. It's a wonderful book. It's a story that you're going to enjoy reading. But let me tell you about her so you know why I'm so excited. Meg Nostro is a former federal immigration prosecutor. And you can read a lot more about that in Butterfly Awakening with all of its twists and turns. First, her desire to get there and then, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? It's a real interesting story. She's a TEDx speaker, an inspirational speaker, a leadership coach, and the award-winning author of The Magical Guide to Bliss, Daily Keys to Unlock Your Dreams, Spirit, and Inner Bliss, a great book you might want to buy and read, and Sparkle and Shine, 108 Mantras to Brighten Your Day and Lighten Your Way, and the new book, Butterfly Awakens, A Memoir of Transformation Through Grief. And that's the one that we'll talk about today, but the others are equally important. Um, after she was brought on stage in Miami with Oprah Winfrey in 2014, she was inspired to manifest the life of her dreams and founded Butterflies in Bliss and Shine, S-H-I-N-E, a networking inc group, a nonprofit that provides educational scholarships to young innovative leaders in her community. Nocero appeared at CNN Español mm -hmm. and her podcast and online media such as MSNBC, CBS, Boston Herald, Chicago Tribune. She hosts a YouTube channel and a podcast called Manifesting with Meg, Conversations with Extraordinary People. I bet you now know why this is going to be such a wonderful conversation. But I'm going to put her book up here right with mine. There we go, we'll stick it right up here. Mm -hmm. You can look at it during our whole conversation. It will awaken you to how to, what I'm always preaching, how to see things through a fresh lens. Thank, thank you for joining. Oh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity, Andrea. You're such a powerhouse and, and what you're doing for women in this world, I think is just amazing, inspiring and empowering as well. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak well, to your audience. Well, I, but I'm delighted that we finally met and have a chance to share. Yeah. My first question always is who is Meg? And what's your journey been? And I know I read about it in Butterfly Awakening, but there are enough lessons learned through a life's journey to share with our listeners so they too can begin to see their lives as evolving like a butterfly. Share yeah. with the listeners or the audience, please. That would be terrific. You know, I, it's interesting because I think we're all becoming who we want to be. And we always are going back in time to the beginning of when we came into this world and all the big dreams we had as little children and what we wanted to see unfold and the beauty of our lives. But we really just wanted to experience it. That curiosity, that peaking of that curiosity was foremost and paramount in our lives. And we didn't know any better. So that is basically where we start. And, you know, one of the things that I really cherish about my life experience, my journey, my adventure is that I'm adventurous. I love to go out and be curious and meet the people who cross my paths and get to know them and, and truly experience that profound relationship on a different level. Now, back to who that I've become, I would have to say it's really I get impacted by so many that I take all the beauty that I learn from others, that wisdom, and I'm, I'm able to take it along with me on my journey of life, which I think is just the biggest gift we can give to each other. I think that that is beyond 
amazing. So, you know, as far as my, my educational journey, I speak four languages. I went to, I went to college to learn romance languages. I speak Spanish and Italian paramountly and then French and, and sometimes English. And then I, you know, I decided I was going to go into the foreign service. So I went into, you know, the school of international studies in Miami, ended up in Miami. That's how I started down here. That's how I became, I get, got down here and I have not looked back. I love Miami. It's a vibrant city of many incredible cultures coming together where, you know, sometimes it's not so great, but I always like to look at the beauty of the passion of it, you know, and I, and I love Miami. I've loved it since, you know, the day I moved down here. And, you know, then I decided to go to law school after getting my master's. So the educational component was, you know, setting those foundational tools that we get to show up as. And then after that, you know, I went back to my creative side after 20 years of a prosecuting attorney with DHS. I was like, you know, I want to start playing in the creative realm a lot more. And, and I think that, you know, we don't have to do one or the other. Certainly one of the, my favorite things is bringing them both together, you know, that balance of the left and the right brain. And, you know, that's really where I'm trying to play right now is, you know, using all of those, the, the logical skills, the articulation and the, and the actual uh, listening skills, and then taking that together with this whole creative side that I get to write and I get to experience these conversations and inspire other people through a more, you know, playful creative side. So that's where I am today. You know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but like we said at the outset in the green room, right, take a deep breath and be present in the moment and just try to enjoy where you are and basking in whatever accomplishments or lessons you've learned so you can turn around and enjoy what's right in front of you. So with all of this balancing, you know, you're an attorney on one side, an author on the other. The books that you wrote, your early books, were lessons learned, but also a listing of bliss, of ways of doing things that were emotional. Remember, people buy and decide with the emotions. So talk about the first books. What were they about and how did they come about? Well, I mean... I will say that the writing journey started as I looked for a healing tool to get me through a grieving process when I lost my mother in 2011. So I always loved to journal and I always found, you know, a lot of solace going into my journal, like hoping no one ever read those thoughts ever, you know, but being able to just like divulge on the page, those feelings, those emotions, et cetera. When I lost my mother, um, it was really a true cutting off of a conversation that I was having with her on a daily basis, where I started my day with the inspiration of her, and then, you know, made it through by virtue of, you know, just getting that endorphin hit in the morning, which I think it was because, you know, it's funny when people are addicted, and I would say not addicted poorly, because, you know, I, I loved her, you know, it was a source of unconditional loving and conversation with my mother, she was brilliant talk about a real professional powerhouse. She, she had three masters. She was always in the whole discernment process, always wanting to learn more, always wanted to educate herself greater, read constantly. So the conversations we had, I felt like I was with a college professor every day of my life. I mean, that is like, I remember college days and I miss them so much, just sitting outside of your dorm rooms, just having those incredible, you know, mind-blowing conversations you know at the beginning you know we look back now we were probably like we were just such babies then but really just those conversations where you just take to expand your perspective and by learning through the eyes of great uh, professors great literature your colleagues your friends your, your people who are playing in that realm with you so for my for me it was like this ongoing conversation with my mother so when she died it was really painful because I was yearning for that and one of my incredible friends, who's also a therapist, she said to me, just because they're not present here doesn't mean that you can't have a connection with that person. Yes. She said, figure out a way that you can meet her. And I found her on the written page. And what I would do is in kind of a meditative you know, experience, I would ask her, what do I need to hear today? I would pull a book that may speak to me. And then I just channeled whatever she would tell me for the wisdom of the day. And it ended up as 366 insights in my magical guide to bliss. So basically what I came up with was a guide to pull me through the grieving process and in, in turn really set me out on a, a path, a, a life path that I really was excited about again, because I found myself at the time, you know, she told me before she passed away, 
stress will kill you <laughs> and have no regrets. And I was like, oh my God, if this were my <laughs> final week of life, I would not be happy. I was like, there's no way that this has to be my, you know, my, the end of my dash, like this experience where I am, where I'm sitting. So, you know, we all have that experience where we recreate perhaps, you know, the direction we want to see our lives walk in. And like, like I said at the beginning, going back to what made us come to life as children, maybe taking some of those, you know, seeds that were already in us and start watering them a little bit more. So writing for me was that watering process. And then I started sharing my insights with other people in email fashion. And then the coolest thing was that after I was on stage with Oprah Winfrey in 2014, where she said, live the life you want. And I was like, well, you know, I better start figuring out what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided, okay, I'm going to publish my first book, which is a magical guide to bliss. And I went ahead and I, you know, attorneys don't have necessarily the Im information you need to publish a book. So I had to learn all of that. I had to learn, but you know, I didn't see it. And I wasn't, I wasn't, I was excited. I wasn't tired. Right. And that's how, you know, you're going in the right path. The right direction yeah. is when you get excited by something and yes, it's going to take a lot of work, but it's not draining me. It's not sucking the life force out of me. So I started looking in those avenues and then, you know, also Andrea, people started showing up with the information too, which is another, you know, I say God wink that you're going in the right direction. So that was my first book. And then I actually, after I published it, I started following it. I actually read every day from January Carpe Diem to the end in December on Inspiring Magic and Miracles. And I followed my own guide and this is where I am, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. So I'm very grateful. I wrote my own guide and then I shared it with whoever it may resonate with. If, if you're looking for inspiration, I always say the synchronicity, the Carl Jungian synchronicity, when you open up to a certain page, set your intention and ask, you know, what do I need to hear today? And there's something wonderful that might just pop up and just give you what you need to hear to move forward. Meg, there are two sides to you that I want to make sure you share with the listeners. The first is that you had a family, you have a family. Yes, I do. <laughs> and the second is the uh, I'll call it an aha moment when you had enough with your professional career as an attorney, because I think that for many of our audience or listeners, uh, those are relevant for them as well. And we talk about you know work life balance, but I, I think it's a blend. I think that you yeah. know we, all, we are all those things. We're mothers and we're lovers and we're you know we we have our creators and. And if we, we spend time on all of them, it's rich, but how do you do that? And then your career was exactly what you wanted and nothing you wanted. I mean, it, it sort of went through its own journey. Can you talk a little bit about both of those? Wow, you know, the career, right? The identity, I think it becomes people's identity, their yes. purpose and what they exactly. associate their life force with it after a while, you know? So after 20 years, you know, as a practicing attorney, and then stepping away from that, I was I was kind of lost again. <laughs> I was like, who am I? Who do I want to be? It's, it's an identity. It's who we are. It is. And, you know, a lot of people will like look back on their lives and say when they retired, a lot, some people just kind of give up because they're like, what am I going to do? What am I going to be a service to? And I think that that for me is really important because when I was when I grew up, uh, that was a component that was really reinforced in all three of us, my sisters and I, that we are of service using the talents that we've been given in this world. And I was, I was like, well, what a, you know, I had an, I had a I had a program when I was at the Department of Homeland Security, I was the lead intern coordinator. So I would recruit students and I had done it for nearly 17 years. So I was interviewing, you know, people who were interested in working with us or with them, DHS, and, you know, looking at the different personalities and, you know, having different kind of interview styles, trying to figure out, well, what gets me, you know, the people that will most likely be successful in this capacity, kind of vetting out, you know, those who are just there to put it on the resume and not really show up and do the work. And then people who are really eager to learn and take advantage of the opportunity, because it was volunteer. We didn't pay, unfortunately. And, and, you know, that was something, but, you know, the opportunity to actually litigate in front of the, uh, you know, in front of the immigration court was huge. You get that apprenticeship, which that's not necessarily in the world as much anymore. And um, that was really very proud for me to have that opportunity to teach these really impressionable minds to have show up professionally yeah. 
you know, proud of what they're show doing. And also there's, you can't bifurcate <laughs> your, your, your presence in work, you know, your personal life is different than your professional life. I was like, you can't do that. You've got to show up who you are and know full well. And we tell this all the time is your reputation is so important because that's how you're going to be able to even navigate well or poorly in this world. So that was really something that I was proud about. So going into a coaching capacity as a leadership coach was very, you know, seamless for me. It was, you know, I've been doing this for so long. Just change the venue. It was just change the venue and maybe in a small way, you know, a bigger, it was more for me, a, a bigger classroom. I could expand my efforts because, you know, like you said, we're so many different roles, wife, mother, you know, you know, everything that, you know, you don't really have a lot of wiggle room to offer your, you know, skills to the, the world at large, because you're so tired sometimes. So, you know, keeping that in mind. So, you know, really, the whole stepping away from that career and having, you know, and especially since I'm a lawyer, you know, lawyers are very judgmental, I will say that, you know, we it's, it's a demanding it's a demanding uh, career profession. We all have to pass, and everybody, I'm sure, medical, everything is the same, but I only know that particular field. You know, we have to pass the bar. We, we want to see people show up with credentials as to what they're capable of doing. We don't want to just believe that here you put up a sign and say, I am who I am. <laughs> we want to see that you went through the rigorous training for that. So for me, it was really important that I go through a coaching program and then get certified through the International Coaching Federation because I just wanted to make sure, and then also ongoing education, I wanted to make sure that I was serving people you know, in the best possible way, but with using my, my magic as well, bringing that in, my experience, the wisdom, as you know, that you have and you share with so many. So that really, that scary leap of faith to, okay, I see a picture coming into focus and I'm getting a more of a, a, a good vibe around where I'm going. And then, you know, like I said before, a lot of the doors open and they start to open and you're like, okay, I'm going in the right direction. This feels right. Paying attention to your intuition, knowing that you've got a lot of experience that kind of bolsters that and you're not moving in this world, you know, completely with <laughs> uncertainty or unpreparation, you know, not preparation, but, um, you know, it's been, it's been quite a, a journey. And I will say, you know, sometimes I will say that, you know, it was really challenging and it still, ha I have moments of that, you know, you always have to like take a, I love your book, Rethink. You always have to step back and rethink perhaps where you're going just to make sure. And I love this. Stephen Covey says not to put the ladder on the wrong wall so that you climb all the way up to the top and you have to feel like, yeah, I got to go back down again because you didn't really think it out before <laughs> you started going. So what made you then start your memoir? Because Butterfly Awakening is a memoir. And, that's correct. And, and that's very different than your other books. What, yeah. what propelled you then to start on this book? So I, I think that there was something in me when I was going through the grieving process initially, and I think this is really the reason, that was, don't you dare give up hope because your story has to have some purpose. There has to be a reason why I'm falling apart right now and there's gonna be someone out there, that audience of me, you know, that Meg who's looking for something to hold on to and not give up hope for, that may need to hear that as long as you keep moving forward and find, or I, I mean, really ask for help that you might need to help you, you know, navigate some really challenging times then as long as you keep walking this path, trusting the process, then you're going to be okay. And, and I think it's always too early to quit on your life. And I think I hear over and over a lot of people feeling so, you know, helpless or hopeless. And, and I wanted to send a message that, you know, you know, life is filled with ups and downs, unfortunately, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, the downs kind of are a little too much, <laughs> you know, and then when they're too much, Go to the people who've been through what you're going through to help walk you through to the end. And I love one of these, one of the things that I was told over and over during that process from a beautiful, beautiful friend of mine, Janet was, was she's like, we're here to walk each other home. And if home is the end, like where we to say at the end, I have no regrets, you know, this was a great life. That's kind of where I'm going. That's kind of what I'm looking to do. So inspire someone who might be in a really dark place to yep. know 
that, okay, it's going to be hard and okay, you might need to, you know, sit in your closet and cry for a couple days, months, who knows, but at the end of the day, I'm here to grab your hand and say, it's time to move on because your life really is special. Your talents are really unique and we need everyone to be a part of this process. I, I, I went to some of the quotes that start in your uh, chapters because I think it captures the beauty of both the book of yourself uh, but you know this one I love perhaps the butterfly remember this is a butterfly awakening perhaps the butterfly is proof that you can go through a great deal of darkness yet become something beautiful and that was from Bo Taplin an American writer that's what I love and then this is Oprah there's always an Oprah I love Oprah always the whole <laughs> I mean, to her point, the whole point of being alive is to evolve into the complete person who you were intended to be. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know what that is. No. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a path. And, and then there was one more, Robin Williams. I love Robin. You're only given one little spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. That one is mine because you reach a point in life where I've achieved a great deal. You have as well. Mm -hmm. And, and our, our, my family has grown and I have wonderful grandkids and they're all very healthy and happy and I'm blessed. My husband and I have been together for most of our life. And wow. so now we have this ability to give. What's our purpose? What's our passion? What can we take from our life's experience, your journey and mine, and help somebody else through their hurdles, maze ways? Remember, my life is really a past, a very sophisticated maze way. You don't know what's here. So what I've learned, and then you can tell me what you've learned, is that serendipity really is part of life. You just show up. And someone will say something, and if you keep your mind open, you'll go, that's a big idea. No, I if love you hadn't that. thought about it, you might have, but you didn't. So I love serendipity. So keep showing up. Right? And the second thing I learned is that test things. You never know. Some will work, some won't. So what? Move on. I learned that a long time ago. Because nothing, if, for me, remember, I'm an anthropologist who helps companies change. Right. Yeah. I'm always on this vacuum where there's nothing happening. And when there's no, we don't know what it is, then it's an important time for us to figure out something there. Right. And then the third one is talk to people. And you know, the science of well being has taught us that acts of kindness, gratitude, and talking to people can make your day beautiful like yours is, whether it's written or it's in, and your mother gave you that oxytocin and the serotonin and made you feel that you were, that, that there was a connection and you belonged. So it gave you the help. We're almost ready for us to wrap up. Tell me, tell the audience two or three things that you hope they haven't forgotten as they finish up listening to you today. What are the things that you want them to walk away with inspired in some fashion? Any thoughts? Yeah, you know, I love what you said. Thank you so much. I'm going to take that with me. And as well, I'd like to leave people perhaps with the idea that there is something in each of us that is so incredibly special. And it's we're, we demand that you embrace that beauty because each one is here to bring something really incredible to the world by virtue of your presence alone. Imagine that just being present. So with that, I would pray that everyone starts every morning with a belief in self. I think confidence is an amazing, amazing, amazing word. It means in Latin confidere with faith, that confidence, having that faith in yourself that you're here on purpose for a great purpose, I think is life changing. It changes perspective. It changes how we see ourselves in the mirror and it changes other people because when you start to evolve with this incredible belief in yourself, it gives permission to other people to do the same. That is number one. And the other thing I want people to take is it's always too early to quit on yourself. You never have to give up because every day is a new opportunity to get to be alive. So if you have that opportunity, if you have that gift, I really want you to look at it from a perspective of how can I serve others by virtue of my presence in this world? Because that is also something positive, positive psychology dictates. When we serve others from a place of love, then we, we receive it 
five, 10, 20 fold, because you never know what that input of love will do as a ripple effect beyond your wild imagination. And you might not get it from the person you're serving, but you definitely will receive it. It'll come back to you. And it's that wonderful karmic circle of life. And especially in this time, this season of seeing a more bright lights in this world, I beg everyone just to start seeing themselves that way and somehow figure out a way to turn your light on and share it and be bright as you can be. Now, did you, th this is, it's beautiful to listen to you because we know that your well being is intimately connected to acts of kindness, yeah. to saying thank you, to being grateful. Do a little of that and you'll find yourself waking with a smile every day. You won't even know where yeah. it comes from. <laughs> That's awesome. I, but, but I do have one question. Did you do yeah. this on your own or was there someone along the way who lent a hand? Because people are looking for mentors and they're looking yeah. for sponsors. And, and I, I was my own mentor, my own sponsor, except for my husband, who was my big teammate. But by and large, you know, women are just realizing the power of collaboration, conversation, okay. the network. But up till now, you know, I was the only SVP in a bank, the only EVP in the bank who was a woman. I was the only woman on boards. And after a while, you became lonely because there was nobody to give a hand. Like, how do we do this? How about yourself? Was there anyone in your life or are you also a soloist here? You know, I will say this. I... I definitely have been impacted by a lot of strong women in my life and starting with my family. We're talking about how incredibly grateful I am yes. to have the example of strong women in my Italian American family going from my grandmothers and my mother and my cute. aunts. I, yeah, I, yep. I, 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 I am beyond grateful to, for the examples that were set for me because I think that has a lot to do with legacy and it would have been much harder had I not had them walking before me. And, and, you know, I have a grandmother who was like four foot nothing. And she was always out there and goes, get in the room. You're just as important as everybody else. Step up, you've got something to say. And she would push you well, forward. But you and, see, what's interesting is that I almost wrote this book and called it what I learned at my grandmother's knee. I love because that. <laughs> she, and that's a book that should come because um, she was a matriarch at a marvelous family firm that I was supposed to move into and take on. Um, but at the time I was uh, able to stand, I watched her and I learned from her. I learned from my mother who was deeply involved in there. And, and in some ways I became who I am as with them as my role models. Um, but they were interesting because when I told them I was going to be an anthropologist, they sort of rolled their eyes and said, whatever you do you're on your own here you go and 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 i said don't worry and i never did never looked back so we had the joy okay. i'm going to say goodbye to us so that our listeners can wrap up and go on their beautiful day and thank our listeners for coming it's truly a pleasure to share meg nasero with you nasero nasero say it for Nasser. 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 Got it. Meg Nasser. And I ask her forgiveness for messing her name up. It's a <laughs> beautiful name. But my, for our listeners and our audience, I got it finally. And you will too. Um, Butterfly Awakening is a marvelous book. And I do think that you will all get inspired to blossom like a butterfly does and realize that things are challenging, but there's tomorrow. And don't waste it. Um, there's a little quote I have here from Shwa, Shwa Sank Redemption. It's time to get busy living or get busy dying. Love it. Love that little quote because today is a good day to start. For all of you who come, thank you. Send me your emails. They're terrific. Just to emphasize, On the Brink with Andy Simon was uh, is ranked now in the top 5% of all the podcasts globally. Thanks to all of our audience and listeners. And I'm glad you enjoyed the audio and the video. Share it. It's great fun. So I'll say goodbye. Thank you, Meg. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day.